I'm here at the world famous Rayo's in uh, East Harlem, New York. Uh, this is one of the most famous Italian restaurants in the world. Notoriously, you cannot get a table here. I would say over a year wait if you even want to try. Uh, but I'm lucky enough to be at this table with the one and only, the co-owner, Frank Pellegrino Jr. Frank, thank you for having me. No, pleasure. I'm lucky to be at this table with you. Oh, really? You couldn't get a reservation? No. All right, we gotta talk to someone. <laughs> but when you're in this restaurant, it feels so good. It's so, it's, it's so intimate. How many tables are there in here? There's only 10 tables. <laughs> and, and, and no menu, right? I've no menu, one. no menu. You have to get invited here. People own the tables here. Like, how does that work? It's basically squatter's rights. Um, my dad, when the restaurant started to gain a lot of notoriety back in the late 70s and early 80s, my father refused to displace anybody who was already coming here. And that was really the beginnings of table rights. So if you were here before, we never want to let you go because you're part of the success of this. You're what makes Rayo's Rayo's. Rayo's is about people. It's about neighborhood. It's about, believe it or not, embracing people, even though you can't get in here to eat. And every week, you come here on a Monday, you'll see the same people. And people have had tables here for over 40 years. Wow. It's remarkable. It's really an unbelievable experience. I can't describe the feeling that you get. I came here the first time. I came early and make sure I'm here for the dinner. And I walked in, and everyone's like, who are you? I go, uh, I'm here to meet my friend Tom. And they're like, go to the bar, have a drink. I go, OK. And down the, down the bar, there's this guy in a, like a shark skin suit, silver. <laughs> and he's drinking his white hair. He's drinking a coffee out of those, one of those glass coffee mugs that are a little bit higher, and he's drinking coffee, and he goes, uh, hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Uh, not even looking at me, which is the first sign of you're getting you're in trouble. So I go, hey, hi, how are you, man? I ordered like a gin or something. He goes, yeah, everything's good. You dance with my wife. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? So I go, dude, I go, who's around me? What is he talking about? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you dance with my wife. And I go, Oh man, like, wow, this is how it ends. I can't believe this. <laughs> and I go, I, well, I got I, I, I looked at him and he's such a friendly face. And he goes, at Drew Barrymore's wedding. Yes. How you doing? Good to see you again. And I go, he goes, I'm the owner, Frank. How you doing? And I go, oh my God. <laughs> I just freaked out. I saw my life flash in front of me. Oh my God. <laughs> it was the best. And from then on, uh, we hit it off. And thank you for letting me come back. I, I know Billy Joel comes here a lot. I've seen. Um, I think presidents have been here. Uh, do you, what, what memories do you have? One of my fondest memories, believe it or not, that knocked my socks off, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, happened right here at this table with our mutual friend, Tommy. He brought in a bevy of celebrities and singers. Celine Dion, Gloria Stefan, Jim Carrey was at the table. Robin Williams was at the table. There was about eight people here. And they all got up and sang My Girl, like you do, with my dad. No way. It was unbelievable. To the, an indelible mark in my memory. Never go away. I'll never forget, because I, I sang it once. I sang uh, maybe something with your dad uh, under the boardwalk or some doo-wop. And then every time I came, your dad would come by and say hi. And I know he's going like, he's going to ask me to, to, he's like, come up, sing something. And every time we'd sing, and then standing ovation. Because there's only 10 tables. But it's so fun. It's so intimate and fun. I can't describe this feeling that no one can really get. I mean, you're, you really feel that from the food, by the way. I can't even talk about how delicious the food is. The meatballs. Okay. That's the one thing that I, I mean, there's so many things, uh, but how do you make the meatballs? Could you show me? How? I would love to show you how we make the meatballs. Let's do this. Let's do it. We're making meatballs right now. <laughs> I know this apron. Turn around. Oh here. my gosh, look at this. Oh Time my gosh. For you. Look at this. Yeah, if anyone knows, a good sauce, or some people call it a gravy. It just smells so good. Oh, I'm gonna let you kick it all off. Okay. So the first thing I'd like you to do is take a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay, here we go. Do you know what percentage ground beef this is? It's a pound of beef, oh. half a pound of pork, and a half a pound of veal. Wow. Now, before you start to massage the meat, I want you to put a little pepper on there. Come on, you gotta get your hands a little dirty. Rub it in, come on, like this. Yeah, rub it in, okay, yeah. And we gotta turn the meat. It looks very well blended together. Beautiful. Thank so you. So now we're going to take these two eggs. Okay. Half a cup of water. Dino showed me uh, 
a little trick and a method that really works well. Yeah. We're gonna make it snow on the meatballs. I'm gonna put some cocaine cheese. Yeah. <laughs> oh, parmesan, parmesan cheese. <laughs> Those days are long gone. <laughs> Has anyone ever cooked in here, the celebrities? A couple of people come in for tips here and there. Has anyone been thrown out of here? Uh, not to my, I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. Wow. <laughs> that is, did you get that? You take a handful like this, right? Yeah. And now you roll. And roll. And that's perfect. It's something, right? I'm going to have Dino show you how to fry <laughs> the meatballs. I know Dino. I love you, chef. All right, Dino, what do we got here? What do we got brewing? Frying pan, we're going to heat the oil up. Put them in nice and easy. And once they're golden brown, we'll put them in the sauce and finish them off. Oh, my gosh. Anyone who loves meatballs, look at this. Oh, my God. There's meatball bloggers out there that are freaking out right now that I'm in the kitchen of Rayo's making the world famous meatballs. All right, so you, you got these golden brown, you put them in the sauce and you leave them for how long? 20, 20 minutes, a half hour. Do you make your sauce homemade or do you use Rayo's from the jar? Homemade. Because that's what I do. Homemade. But it's the same recipe. Whose recipe was it? It was my great grandmother's, which was passed to my grand aunt, and he was the chef here with my uncle Vincent. You ready to judge your work, pal? Let's go, let's Come see. on, let's go eat. Oh, wow, 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 wow. wow. Oh. Ah. Hey, awesome. fellas, how you doing? Hi, how, how, you doing? Are you? how are you? How are you? How are you? Welcome to Reyes. This is Jimmy's prepared pasta. You made pasta. this? Yeah. And that's called a meatball? It's like a ball of meat? Do you want any Parmesan? Do you you going to join them? Come on. <laughs> Come on. I have to. It's my favorite meatball in the world. Have I'm you done it? first bite. Mm. Oh, my God. Bon appetito, gentlemen. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Mmm. I mean, seriously, that is unbelievable. My God. I actually want more. It's unbelievable. My thanks again to Frank Pellegrino Jr., uh, co-owner of Rayo's here in uh, East Harlem. This is such a treat. Amazing, amazing. These meatballs are the best. In fact, uh, I know someone that would love these meatballs. Can I get some to go? You can on it for sure. Thank you, buddy. Mm. Thanks, pal. Love you. Love you, too. You gonna finish uh, that? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it to go. All right. <laughs> Get that. Uh huh. So on and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's so on and on and on.